In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to develop, deploy, and scale a Node.js microservice that stores data in a MongoDB database. This microservice implements a simple tax calculation engine for an example e-commerce shopping application. For this demonstration, we'll be using the OpenShift source to image build approach. And we will also use an OpenShift template that creates both the Node.js service and the MongoDB database in one go. We'll be deploying two container pods as part of this application, one for the Node.js microservice and the other for the MongoDB database. Let's first look at the application source code to see our microservice implementation. Let's go ahead and clone the repo from GitHub. I've already written the, a sample application called TaxCalc. TaxCalc is a standard Node.js Express application that uses the Mongoose library to connect to MongoDB. The package.json lists all the dependencies for this microservice and describes how the application is to be run. OpenShift can auto-detect the package.json file and it can automatically use a pre-existing Node.js base image, um, invoke npm install automatically to install all the dependencies and package the resulting application and the node runtime into a container. It finally deploys it to the cluster and all of this happens without any developer intervention or having to write Docker files and build the image manually. Let's briefly look at the OpenShift template for this application. It combines both the MongoDB database definition and the Node.js service and describe how both pods must be built and deployed. OpenShift spins up a MongoDB database and auto-generates a username and password, which is then injected into the Node.js container. This is how the Node.js microservice knows how to connect to MongoDB. The microservice implements the tax calculation engine in a file called main.js. We have the standard Express Router API and we define a whole bunch of routes in this application. The root context simply returns the host name under which this particular service is running. We have two other route, a post route that calculates the tax uh, based on a given amount that is sent as input and we also have a get route called list which simply lists all the transactions received by this service. Let's go ahead and deploy this microservice to OpenShift. Let's first check if the Minishift cluster is running. I can do this by running the Minishift status command. So we've confirmed that the cluster is running. Let's go ahead and bring up the OpenShift web console by running the Minishift console command. Log in as developer developer and the default my project is the only project we have for our account. For this demonstration, let's go ahead and create a new project called demo2. We can now go ahead and create application an application using the OC new app command. We pass the template JSON file as arguments to the OC new app to ask OpenShift to parse the, parse the template and then create the required pods. We can follow the build process based on using the OC logs command. Notice that 
it clones the repo from github calls npm install which fetches all the dependencies from the npm js repository and then builds an image and pushes it to the openshift internal registry let's look at the openshift web console for this project observe that openshift has created two parts that we defined in our template the mongodb part called taxcalc db and then the actual node.js microservice called taxcalc let's go ahead and test our microservice using some simple curl commands before we do that let's first check if the root context is accessible so it prints the host name in our case the pod on which this microservice runs let's go ahead and submit some transactions to this microservice so we it the microservice takes an id a transaction id as one of the arguments and the actual amount for which the tax has to be calculated and our contract type is application json we have a post request and then followed by the route which is displayed here in the openshift web console so we got a message saying okay it's calculated the tax 30% of $100 which is 130 and prints it we can submit a few more transactions let's do a few more so we've submitted four transactions to the microservice and let's verify if these transactions have been stored in mongodb and fetched so the four transactions that we submitted are stored in mongodb and then retrieved back again now that we have deployed and tested our microservice let's go ahead and scale this microservice so scaling is as simple as using the ocp web console to scale up the number of parts and openshift very quickly brings up a second part with our microservice and we can verify that the requests are getting load balanced by hitting the root context which displays the pod name under which the microservice runs notice how the requests are load balanced between the two pods let's go ahead and now make some changes to our application and then redeploy it let's edit the source code and reduce the tax rate by 10% and make it 20% let's commit the changes back to github verify the changes that we made provide a nice git commit message and oh I forgot to add okay git add file and git commit it and then git push the changes back into github so changes have now been pushed to github and to trigger a new build we can use the openshift web console go to build 
builds click on tax calc and then start build and then you can follow the build log right from within the console itself just like we did with the command line so OpenShift goes ahead and clones the repository with our changes repeats the whole npm install process builds a fresh container and pushes it to the OpenShift internal registry and deploys two new pods uh, recall that we scaled this microservice to two pods so our changed our changes are changed pods there should be two pods once this is deployed first part is being deployed second part almost there and it's done let's verify we're running OC get parts that we have two new parts notice that notice the numbering has changed version 1 which is the, the original version uh, the, the part suffix was 1 and now it's 2 so we have two new parts and then we can repeat the curl commands that we ran previously let's first check if the, the root context is working properly like before the requests are load balanced let's go ahead and submit some more transactions increment the ID by 1 and the amount is 100 should give us back 120 rather than 130 because we reduced the tax percentage by 10 to 20 percent and finally the list should return back this new transaction that we sent to the microservice so we have now developed deployed and scaled our microservice on OpenShift what if things don't go all right during your deployments how do you troubleshoot them we have some command line as well as the web console to troubleshoot if something goes wrong during deployments so let's first check the parts that are running in our application so we have two node.js parts we have single mongodb part let's say we want to check something on the mongodb part if something went wrong so we have the OCRSH command which can directly we can go directly into the container shell we are now inside the mongodb container pod and recall that the template injects certain environment variables related to the mongodb database let's connect to our database running locally on the default port which is 27017 our database is called taxcalcdb with a username called that and the password of this hash here we are now in the mongo shell let's see all the collections that we have in this mongodb database we have a collection called transactions which are microservices created and we can check that check all the all the documents that are in this database 
So we sent four transactions, they're all here. Indeed, all the transactions got persisted. And this is how you verify and troubleshoot your database pods. Similarly, you can also go into the Node.js pods if something goes wrong. So you can click application pods. Uh, let's go into this pod here and then just go. You can check some logs if something went wrong. Uh, your Node.js, your Node applications, uh, console.log shows up here. For example, this line is there in our code. So you can put in your log statements that we've shown here. You can also go into the pods shell and run whatever commands you want, troubleshoot it, etc., etc. That's it, this concludes the demonstration.